is Sir Tap Tap. Welcome, friends, well wishers, people I don't know, to Let's Play The Company of Myself by Zizarni. I don't know what that's supposed to sign. The Company of Myself, a game by Eli P. Lonen, with art by Luca Marcetric, and, a game, and music by David Carney. See, I can pronounce one of those names. One out of three isn't bad. Let's play a new game, shall we? If you have a minute, I'd like to tell you a bit about myself. The first thing you need to understand is that I am alone. I've been alone for a pretty long time now. I'm used to it. I'm content. Before I became more or less a hermit, I found that I had two passions in life. One was performing. Even today, I find I can't relate to others. I still stand in front of them and make them laugh or surprise them. The irony is strong enough to taste. It doesn't taste good. In case you're wondering, my second passion was a girl named Catherine, but we'll get to that later. I generally face the same day-to-day -day problems as another person. I know that you don't want to hear me describe my admittedly less than fascinating lifestyle, so instead I'll describe things very hurriedly because I'm running out of text. Oh no, I find joy in the company of myself. You said the name of the game? Oh my gosh! My attention is stolen by a green square at the other end of the room. I want to be its friend more than anything that I've ever wanted. The square does not react to my approach. Does it not notice me? Or is it only pretending not to notice me? Cheeky bugger. Which would be worse? Up close, I can see that the green square is actually a door. I think we can be friends anyway. I decide to push the space bar to move into the next room. Spotting a couple of platforms ahead, I decide to use the up arrow key to jump over them. Take that, platforms. I decide that Mr. Door is a better friend than the platforms. I also note that I can pause the game by pressing P or the escape key. I make a mental note that I can press P or escape to continue. I also note that the slider controls volume. Help me. What? Why can I not? Oh, spacebar, right. Now that risk is involved, jumping on the platforms doesn't seem as easy to me. Start thinking about how often it would be to fall. Luckily, I can press the R key at any time to restart the level. I really love the narrative style in this game. Makes for a nice tutorial, too. I find myself proud of, and possibly surprised by, by my ability to leap over narrowing gaps. Harrowing. Something. Even from back here, I can tell that ledge is far too high for me to jump. How terrible. I begin to wonder what would happen if I pressed the spacebar before I completed the level. I begin to wonder. Oh. It appears to be a little ghost me. How fascinating. I feel confused and a bit tingly. But mostly just confused. I haven't talked to anyone lately, but at least I can solve my own problems. Mostly through the use of arcane magic. I also find it kind of surprising. Oh, I seem to have murdered myself. It seems my little buddies also stand on top of my own head. This is interesting. This is most interesting. I smile and die a little bit inside every time I see them fall into the pits. Okie dokie. Here we go. Whee! Geronimo! I see a wall blocking the path to the exit. I am dissatisfied. The air down here is irritatingly spacious. I think to myself that the best course of action is to pull this lever by pressing the A key. Yes, that was a quite interesting course of action, yes. I'll go on. Press the lever then. Press it. Pull it. Do lever levery things to that lever. There we go. I am grateful for of, of the, 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 the I am grateful of my above average ability to work alone. Yeah, above average, that's a way to describe it. I notice a strange force field in this room. I become gradually more and more curious. I find myself unable to 
comprehend the purpose of this fort field. It doesn't seem to block me at all. Let us see what it does. Go on, me. Oh, snap. Hmm. Interesting. Let us see what happens when we do this, shall we? Yes. Understanding the force field, I notice this room's field is greenish instead of pinkish. I think we all know where this is going. Yes. Huzzah. Staring at this worthlessly large staircase, I reflect on my past struggles. And I look like a moron while solving a puzzle, I hope. Go on, little ghost self. Pull that lever. Aha! Luckily for me, I said something I couldn't read. I search for reasons why I don't desire companionship. I think we need two of me to get up that thingy. One me? Oh, oh, I get it. Wait. Science! Ha! Damn it, me. Now you have a little counter in the top corner there that shows how many of you you have. So you can't always spawn infinite little yous. Shadows, I guess. I settle on avoidance of the issues. I can clearly get by without others anyway. I find myself unable to leave the question alone. Why can I not be with other people? I instantly notice how familiar this symbol of this room is to the last one. I almost feel cheated until I realize my previous tactic will not work again. Oh knows. Whatever shall I do? This ever shall I do? Oh wait. Right. Let us try this. Oh yes. Stupid. No, stop being so fast. Okay, no. Wait, okay, okay. I got this. Stop being so fast, me. Is this the right shadow? Crap, okay. And now we play the waiting game. Man, the waiting game sucks. Let's play Hungry Hungry Hippos. Okay. Son of a... <laughs> Don't know why he falls when you jump. Whatever. Jump! Come on, me. There you go. It doesn't take me long to understand that I'm going to need some timing to get through here. Oh, I see. Start. Unless you count this restarting. Crap. Almost there. I've gotten used to the idea of solving mental problems. 
but I seem to have acquired a slightly more British accent. I still enjoy a test of my physical abilities here and there. I think back to the first day that Catherine and I met. Our paths converged, and suddenly we were a team. This was before I was as reclusive as I am today, so I had not yet learned to multitask yet. That talent grew out of simple necessity. Ooh. So if you press spacebar now, you can control Catherine instead of whatever my name is. Her approach is quiet, as was my response. A connection made was instant and unmistakable. A team. Mutual. Perfect. And obeying the laws of physics, which is nice too. I wasn't ready to let it go. When we faced a problem, we would solve it together. Today I find myself solving the same problems alone. I was unappreciative, plain and simple. I just didn't understand how much I needed her, how much she needed me. Apparently she can stand on my head, but I can't stand on hers. Probably the top hat. As we all know, top hats have magical powers. It was perfect. Everything. It was all perfect. Except for that. I helped her, and she helped me. Mutual. And grainy. Rather grainy, really. Mutually grainy. I never suspected the end to come so quickly. Hmm. But wait a minute. If I press that lever... Oh well. It's probably nothing. Oh. I found myself crushed with guilt. I couldn't leave the house for days. But she was gone. And now I find myself alone. Can't handle talking to people anymore. Internally, I visualize an excited, overexcited man yelling, Checkpoint! Checkpoint! Oh crap, that doesn't work. Do I have to press space? Aha. Should have waited a bit before I press that button. Okay. Just wait a second. Wait a second. Huzzah! I grudgingly consider how the ability to start over from a different perspective would have been helpful earlier in life. Maybe I could have let Catherine not meet me in the first place. And like this, I continue. I know what I'm doing. the ceiling, shall we? Whee! Couldn't do this with Catherine now, could you? No, you couldn't. Oh, slight bit of lag. Probably because there's like ten copies of me, but whatever. What? Don't leave yet. I have more to say. I really do splat. Hmm. Wait, wait. Stand. Okay. Geronimo! Splat. 
stand still. What? Hmm. Crap, this is gonna be annoying. Wait, you're supposed to jump. No, okay. I've played this game before, but I forget how this part works. I just spawn like a giant horde of these guys and jump across their heads. I think that's kind of just what we do here. Oh, oh, I could have made that, I think. Ha! Are you really leaving? Are you? The video's not over yet. I've been tasked with psychoanalyzing Jack after his mental... Oh. I've been tasked with psychoanalyzing Jack after his mental breakdown. In general, he recalls his life very accurately. The things he says line up with all the records. The first problem is he doesn't seem to remember any of my visits. I talk with him once a week for the past eight years, and he always tells me the same things as if I've never heard them before. He describes himself as a loner. This makes a whole lot of sense, as he's been kept in solitary confinement for the duration of his stay at the hospital. He always briefly talks about his life and eventually gets the story of how he lost a loved one, Catherine. He understands that she has died, and he certainly feels at least somewhat responsible, but doesn't recall that he murdered her. She was buried in his backyard in a green package. Evidently, it was the only large box, box large enough for a coffin that Jack could find. Also of note were the two flowers they planted next to the makeshift grave. He considers her death to be the reason he can't talk to other people anymore. I suppose that in a way, he is correct. This will be my final report on Jack. I don't find any reason to believe that he will ever recover from his current state of severe mental illness. He is far too dangerous to himself and others to allow his release. It took eight years of obtaining the same thing once a week for you to realize that. You're a great psychoanalyst, bro. The end. Sad music. Slidey effects. Very special thanks to all the testers. Lots of names. Sorted alphabetically. Oh, hey, Edmund McMillan. Uh, names I don't recognize. More names I don't recognize. Oh, look, there's some names I don't recognize. Alphabetically sorted names I don't recognize. Um, some names. Thanks again, everyone. Is that the end? Apparently it is. The shrink leaves and suddenly I don't even have a person to tell my story to anymore. Sad face.